Greetings to the last day. No, it might not be the last day. They might be working tomorrow morning from the UN conference on uh, climate change, <laughs> sorry, in Bali, Indonesia. And uh, I'm Daniel Nelson of One World UK and One Climate. And behind the camera is Jeffrey Allen of One World US. Uh, we've got a sort of all-star lineup. They've all appeared at once. We either have nobody or everybody turns up at once. So I won't spend much time on uh, introducing it. Uh, just to tell you, there's been a rather interesting development. Uh, some of us have just come from a press briefing by the uh, spokesman for the G77, Munir Akram, the ambassador from Pakistan, who in a very serious tone said that uh, the group of 77, that's the developing countries, they're not really 77, they're 130, and China, uh, have had an uphill battle, that was his words, at the conference to protect and project uh, their interests. Uh, and he said, we've had to fight every inch of the way. Um, he, also but, and he also says that they've been threatened with trade sanctions, which was quite interesting. Yes, it was interesting. That was my dramatic line. That was Mark Linus. L let me introduce people, because they're obviously going to a boisterous bunch, and they're going to butt in. That was Mark Linus journalist and author of High Tide and Six Degrees, which you can plug later, shamelessly, because they're great books. Uh, Martin Hiller, World WWF campaigner, and Tony Juniper, a friend of the earth. Friends of the earth. Thank you very much for coming. I'm thanking them because there's um, lots of negotiations are still going on. It's going to be very late night. There's lots of caucuses. There's lots of briefings, debriefings. There's lots of lobbying. So we won't be able to hold them all the time. So if you've got questions, get them in early. Otherwise, they might uh, flee. So uh, just continuing with uh, Pakistan ambassador's briefing, um, he said that uh, mitigation, adaptation, technology, and finance, sorry to give you the UN jargon, but they're the so-called building blocks uh, at this conference. They're going to get some agreement on that. That's clear. Not as specific as developing countries wanted, but they'll get something. That was his... Uh, verdict, uh, but he said on the big differences, the deep differences, were on the negotiating process. What's going to happen from now on over the next couple of years, and what will be the end product? Will we have a product that, says, that, that seems to slow down climate change or not? I mean, it's one of the things I'd like to ask when we get there. Um, and he also said, this is the Pakistan ambassador, some industrialized countries want to press for a new international agreement. I'm assuming when he says some industrialized countries, he means the U.S. Usually when people say industrialized countries and don't name anybody, it's the U.S. with one or two friends. And that the developing countries feared that the aim was to erode or replace the existing climate change agreements. And then he said, uh, as Mark Linus uh, just mentioned, that there had been threats. He's, and when he, he didn't want to go into it, but when pressed by journalists, he said, I've heard mention of trade sanctions. I don't know whether after I left the room he was more specific. And he backtracked a little under pressure from questioning from journalists when he said uh, it might have been an inadvertent use of the phrase. So, but he's, he's put it into public use that someone is threatening developing countries. So that was a very interesting and... In the, in the terms of uh, the UN and where we are, rather dramatic uh, intervention. So let's, let's just start. W uh, Martin Hiller, can I just ask you, where, where, we, where are we at? This is a very confusing process, and I know a lot of people are watching, but it's hard to get a grip of what the U how the UN works here. Is it possible to encapsulate it a little bit, and why people are staying up all night and what they're now fighting over? Well, let me say something about the ambassador's remarks. I think there is an error in, uh, with some of the governments here when they think that they can make agreements about some of those building blocks that you named, like, that you, that you named, like for instance, technology transfer, uh, and then forget about the central purpose of this conference, which is an agreement on reducing greenhouse gas emissions, especially from industrialized countries because all these other mechanisms will only start to work and will only get funded and will only get you know, put into practice if there is an overall agreement to reduce emissions. Now, at this conference here in Bali, we're not going to get that overall agreement totally finalized because it's all the countries of the world, almost 200 countries, 
needing to come to one conclusion and it takes a little bit of time. But what we want them to do is, we want them to set an ambitious target. And that ambitious target for industrialized countries, for the rich countries, is that they reduce for you know, at least a quarter of their emissions, if not 40%, and that they make sure that we start to peak our CO2 emissions before 2020. Uh, both of that, yeah, the reductions of 25 or 40% up to 2020 and peak the emissions up to 2020 or before 2020. That's technical language, I know, but it's the way to describe this thing. We, we're speaking about concentrations of this gas in the atmosphere, which is a technical issue, and we're talking about not letting these concentrations going too high because the more of this stuff is in the atmosphere, the warmer it gets. So we need to, to reduce the amount of the gas that we put out every year. And at the moment, the amount is still going up. So now it's going up, then it should go down. And that peak must come very quickly. That's a big challenge. It will need a lot of money, a lot of money. It will, it will need much more than money. It will need imagination. It will need dedication. And it will need real effort. And all of that is at stake in this conference. And why are people sitting up all night and negotiating? Because they're not quite in agreement, they don't really trust each other, um, and they don't really think that they can get a good deal out of this. All sides, be it the US, be it the EU, be it Pakistan, be it, other, be it China, be it other developing countries, are very nervous that in that deal their side doesn't get too much disadvantaged. But what we are saying is, this is a real emergency situation and we need to take emergency measures. You know, when a house is burning and you can still run in and save somebody, then you're not going to say, oh, God, my, my shirt could maybe burn too. You're going to go and save that person and that's the situation we are in. Okay, uh, Tony Juniper, can I ask you, you, just for your take on the conference, I mean, as we are now a night to go, maybe a morning, because I understand the Secretary General said he might arrive tomorrow to sort out the remaining differences. But it, is it an emergency and uh, is this forum going to produce emergency results? Undoubtedly the science tells us now that we are on the cusp of very dangerous global warming. We've got a very short time left now to peak and decline the emissions as, as Martin said. Whether or not this forum is the ideal place to do it is irrelevant. It's the only place to do it. This is the only place in the world where there's legally binding discussions going on about emissions reductions. And at the end, we have to have all countries into this process, and the United Nations is the only forum we have to do that. Ideally, it could be made more efficient. It could be made more democratic. There could be UN reforms that would make these things easier in the future. But the time that we have means that we don't really uh, have the opportunity or the luxury to be thinking about big picture political reforms. We have to use this forum to get the job done quickly. Now, that is going to require countries to cooperate. And I think the new politics in the 21st century means that countries cooperating means that they have to look differently at their national self-interest. And one of the things that I think hasn't yet percolated to the Bush administration and perhaps to some other countries is how their national interest now is bound up with the global interest and they can't insulate themselves from the global changes that are going on. Even if they're rich, they're going to be suffering some very serious consequences as a result of global warming. And I, I made the point earlier on that the United States is behaving rather like passengers in first class in a jumbo jet who are believing, quite wrongly, that an emergency or catastrophe in economy class won't affect them. Because if there is a catastrophe in economy class, the first class goes down as well. And that, I think, is the situation we now face. And we need industrialized countries to realize that their comfort and their security cannot be taken for granted. They have to participate. They have to lead. They have to make good faith commitments here about reducing their emissions, help with the financing for developing countries to adapt and to adopt a low-carbon development path, and for the developing countries to be taking a leading role in their own nations in moving themselves towards a sustainable development trajectory where they can be ending poverty at the same time as reducing emissions. All of this can be done. It's not a technical challenge, it's a political one. We have the technologies already, we have some of the institutions, we now need some political will and some money to make it happen. And there could be massive economic and social benefits coming at the same time. 
time, helping to reduce people's uh, fuel poverty at the same time as creating jobs. We can do all of this stuff. We just need a bit of imagination, and we need people in the White House really just to wake up now, because they are isolated not only in the world, but in their own country. George Bush is sitting there like a fossil dinosaur himself, holding out, really, uh, the last prospect that we can solve this problem, blocking that prospect. And I think he just needs to wake up and change his ways pretty quickly.